All right, go ahead, Chris. Um, obviously, we uh, drafted Calvin. Uh, great pickup for us. Uh, really like what we saw on tape when we watched him on tape. He made some plays in, in the slot and, and outside as a, as a perimeter wide out. Uh, did some really good things uh, with the ball in his hands, and so we're excited to have him on board. Uh, thinks he think he has a different dimension to our offense um, uh, with his perimeter ability and his ability in the slot to be able to make some plays for us. So uh, can't wait to get him here, get to coaching him, and uh, see what we can do. Coach, uh, he had said that he played primarily on the outside of Memphis, but do you figure he's primarily inside here? Well, you know, he can play both. And so, uh, you know, right now, you know, we don't know exactly where we're going to put him, um, but uh, with his ability to be, be able to play both inside and outside, um, he gives us some flexibility in that regard. Um, is, he, is he 4 3 2 on tape? Oh, yeah, you see the speed on tape. You see the speed on tape with, with the ball in his hands and without the ball in his hands as he comes off the line of scrimmage. So he, he's fast. <laughs> you know, a big part of Matt Canada's offense is the jet sweeps and everything, too. I mean, is that uh, a big reason you guys liked him, his ability with the ball in his hands? Uh, not, not just for the jet sweeps. I mean, just some of the stuff that he did uh, down the field as far as running by people and, and uh, catching balls down the field on people. That, that's what excited me uh, was that you saw a small guy that's 5'8", but he didn't play 5'8". He played bigger than, than, uh, than his size listed. So um, not necessarily just the jet sweep part of it, but just his whole game just excited us as coaching staff. What does he bring to the, to the wide receiver room that you guys didn't have before? Um... I wouldn't, I don't know, uh, you know, he's obviously he's probably one of the fastest ones in the room, um, but, you know, he's a smaller guy. All the rest of the guys are pretty big except for Deontay. Um, but, um, uh, you know, he, he brings the speed element. He brings uh, a toughness. I'm not saying that the guys weren't tough last year, but he brings some toughness along with some competitiveness. And I think he's going to make the room fun. He's going to bring some juice and all that type of stuff to the room. When you say he plays bigger, how does he do that? Like, how does well, you know, when you when you are five eight guy, can you go up and attack the football when the ball's in his air, when the air, or do you sit down and wait for it? And he goes up and he attacks the ball in the air. Uh, those fifty fifty balls or those competitive combat catches, like Coach Tomlin likes to say, uh, he goes and makes those plays. And so when I when I say he plays bigger than his size, that's what I'm referring to. Where he's a guy that he plays like a guy that's six one, six two, as far as when he jumps up and goes and attacks the football. You had two different size guys to that room. Was it important to get a little bit of? You know, different type of players. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think we came into today with that mentality. Uh, we were just going to take the best guy that was on the board, um, and so he was the best guy available on the board, and he's a guy that we liked as we went through the whole pre-draft process. And so when he was sitting there, you know, Coach Tomlin came down and said, "Hey, man, do you like this kid? You still like him?" I was like, "Absolutely." And so um, you know, he was available, and we took him because he was the best guy on the board. wasn't necessarily looking for size or anything like that. You, you, you kind of get a clean slate. You show up, you get two of the top four draft picks are in your room, and, and you kind of get – is that advantageous to you? You get to kind of make your – No, I wouldn't say that. Jerry O just was making fun of me, saying I just got here and I get get, uh, get all these new guys. But I lost some guys in free agency in my room, and um, so we just added two pieces to the puzzle, and hopefully there are big pieces that can come out and help us win some games. Did you interact with Calvin in the pre-draft process at all? And just what do you think of him as, a, as an individual? Yeah, I spoke with him a little bit at the Combine. You know, we get the little time in the, at the Combine to kind of interview these guys. And um, you felt the competitiveness in his voice when he spoke. Um, you felt the toughness that he had when he, when he talked about how he grew up and how he loved the game of football. You felt his passion. And so those are some of the things that I like uh, in wideouts. I want a guy that's competitive and I want a guy that's tough. And he kind of displayed both those things even without watching the tape. He has a reputation for fearlessness. Do you see examples? Can you, can you give us an example? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it, they were playing Temple, and I see him run across the middle, catch a, a end route across the middle, and he's going to get the crap hit out of him. He holds on and make, makes the catch. And so, um, and I know Temple, I worked at Temple, so I know the type of guys at Temple, some tough dudes at Temple. And so he was able to make, maintain the catch and, and make the play for his team. And I can see a guy that goes across the middle that's not afraid of, hey, I might have to take this hit. I'm an alligator army. So he, he goes out and he attacks the football no matter where the ball is at. Coach, he says he likes to get up after a tough hit and uh, just get right back at it to your point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that shows some toughness. He's not laying down there trying to, you know, land on the ground. He gets up. Whether he's hurt or not, he gets up and he's going to celebrate a little bit and have a little fun with it. And so I enjoy seeing guys do that. Is he a legit punt return? Uh, that's more Danny Smith. I, I, I really concentrated in on the receiver aspect of it all, but I know he's made some plays in the punt return game. And if he's able to do that, that's an extra, 
extra perk for us. What's the biggest thing he needs to improve or you guys need to work with him on to make this transition? Yeah, just keep continuing to refine the route running part of it. Um, you, I saw some things there that I feel like I can really correct, and if those things get corrected, I think he can do some, some really good things in this league for us. Your time in the game as a coach, as a player, there's track guys that can have a wide receiver. I mean, there's some that work out real well, some that don't. Does he have, what, what do you see that, is there a common trait that translates? Or? Well, I, I saw a guy on tape uh, that's a track player that plays football. Um, you know, he's not a guy that, hey, he's a football player that just runs track. I mean, he's, he's a tough dude. You, you see the track speed, but you see the football player in him. And that was important to me uh, because obviously we know he ran track. He went to Memphis on a track scholarship. But I, I wanted to see the toughness, the competitiveness, and I saw those things on tape. And when you scouting a guy that has that track background, you worry about that, whether or not he's a, he's a, he's a track player that's just happened to be playing or a football player that's happened to be just running track. So um, I'm excited to get him in the room because I think he can – He's, he shows those toughness things that, that we want in our group. One thing Mike Tomlin mentioned when you were hired is just your ability to teach in, in the way that you coach. How much do you enjoy the process of you know, helping a guy develop these, these new rookies like Calvin, like George from last night? Well, I consider myself a teacher before anything. Um, the development part of it is huge. I think having the college background where you get a young guy and you have to develop them. Um, the programs that I were in, that I was in as a coach, Temple, Baylor, you had to develop guys. We weren't going to get the five-star guys. So that's in my background. That's important to me. Um, I get pleasure out of seeing a guy as a young pup come in this league or coming come to college, and then you see the developmental phase and you see him develop into the player that you think he could be. And so um, that's important to me, uh, the development part of it. Um, and I consider myself a development and co developmental coach, and I take pride in that. As a wide receivers coach that's been in the league now, what do you make of what's happened this offseason with the way the position's suddenly been uh, valued extremely? Do you feel like that's been something that's coming, or you think it's a little bit crazy, or, or where, do you, where do you land on that? Well, it's, it's so much, the game has transitioned so much to the pass, uh, passing game with seven on sevens, all the seven on seven circuits. Uh, seven on seven circuits become like AAU basketball. These kids travel all over the place to do seven on seven. So you saw the game trending in that direction. So with the influx of so much, so many wide receivers into the draft, um, um, and these guys doing so much seven on seven and so much passing uh, in the college game that you know you kind of saw it coming, and it's a it's a product of that. We know we Calvin, but can we get your breakdown or with George and more about what you think of him and what you. Yeah, um, George, big frame guy. Um, I was able to go work him out of his pro day, and uh, he was a guy that was able to sink his hips, getting out of his breaks, um, transitioning out of his breaks with speed, went up and attacked the football. Um, you, you know, obviously he didn't get to play as many games as he wanted to uh, this past football season, but I, I took, I loved the fact that he wanted to go and play. He came back from the injury, and he was like, he could have easily said, you know what, I'm gonna just sit out and wait. Uh, for the for the draft process to happen and get myself ready for the draft, but no, he went in there and wanted to compete with his teammates and his team, and so uh, I, that showed a lot to me. Uh, but the the skill set is there, um, so I just can't wait to get my hands on him and and Calvin and develop both those guys. As you look ahead to that process, how much does it help that you worked with Matt Canada before? Have you guys kind of picked up right where you left off with his uh, schemes and everything? Yeah, um, obviously I, he coached me actually in college, uh, so. Um, and then I worked with him at NC State. But I would like to think I was, I'm a better coach now than I was when I first started working with him at NC State. And so um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, obviously there's some familiarity with the offense, some familiar, familiarity with the way he coaches and wants things done. So that makes this transition um, coming here to Pittsburgh a lot easier than, than most places. And to your earlier point, how do you feel overall about the speed in your room? Um, well, <laughs> speed is great. <laughs> Speed is great. Um, they all can run. The guys, every guy in my room can run. Um, they can take the top off the coverage. Uh, they'll invite, hopefully they'll invite safeties and stuff over the top of us and we'll be able to open some of the intermediate to short passing game. And, you know, ho hopefully every guy in the room can take advantage of the other guy's speed where teams have to focus on that part of it. Anyone else? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.